We stand here by the Royal Museum and Free Library, founded in 1858. Uh, that was the time when, uh, when uh, sorry, I'm going to start the game, but the Royal Free Library founded at the time when uh, Charles Dickens was in the city. But later on, in uh, about 1898 or 1899. We, uh, we got this free library provided by uh, Dr. J.C. Beanie of Australia from Melbourne. And uh, the story of Beanie is, uh, well, it's confusing, but it's also a very sad and moving story. If we look above you up here, you can see how the building was built in a very odd style. If you go to Westgate on Sea, you'll see a similar building built by the same architect, uh, which is the... Uh, Town Council in uh, Westgate on Sea, but if we look down at these uh, structures, there's some very interesting uh, carvings here. You'll see a griffin either side of the doorway. Look over there, you can see the griffin. I'll try and zoom in for it. And uh, you see the griffin up there, the sign of uh, sort of a mixture of an eagle and uh, a lion together, a sort of mythical symbol. And there's also, if you look very up there a bit further, you can see the image of. Uh, grapes up there at the very top corner up there you can see it Let's look a bit close up there you can see grapes in the uh, in the images so a sign of uh, sort of wealth and uh, fortune over history and time it seems to have uh, Dieu Mondrat the king's seal on it and uh, the story Bean is uh, supposedly that uh, as a young man he was uh, caught stealing a loaf of bread and was sent and deported to Australia and uh, the rules were if you were deported you could never come back but uh, when he landed in Australia, he, uh, he did his seven years penal servitude and was uh, dumped, it seems, uh, rather unceremoniously on the beach at Melbourne. After he'd uh, finished his penal servitude, he, uh, he ended up uh, being uh, given a plot of land north of Melbourne, which when he arrived on a rainy night, uh, he found himself surrounded by these little green stones on the ground around him. Didn't know what they were because he didn't have an education. He was only seven when he stole his loaf of bread the age of 12 and a half. He worked his land as best he could for around 10 years and then eventually saved up enough money to make his way into Melbourne proper and went to the Bank of England office in Melbourne and presented them with these little green stones, wondering if they were worth anything, to which the Bank of England said, my God, how many of these do you have? And he said, oh, thousands, they're all over the ground. I said, you know what these are? And he said, well, no, I don't have an education, so I assumed you'd know. Well, these are uh, emeralds, sir. Uh, some of the finest emeralds in the world. Were they emeralds? No, they'd be, well, not rubies. That's a, oh, God. Anyway, they were the, the green stones. I'm sure they were emeralds. Aren't they? Yes, they were emeralds. And uh, he became one of the richest men in Melbourne as a result. And he, rather than wasting his money, became trained as a doctor and became a surgeon and saved the lives of thousands of men who were deported to Australia. And as a result, was granted freedom to return to England and here to Canterbury, where he founded this museum and uh, library to give children free education or free access to, to education and so we have the institute today it's where we're popping into when it's open it's a very pretty structure pan around now again just to look up above and uh we'll sort of pan up there slightly very beautiful carvings here i'll just uh come out slightly you can see those carvings there and uh, a nice charming story so canterbury's changed very little over the years you've probably recognized bits and pieces of it certainly recognized uh this area here. There was on this site a, a huge inn called the George and Dragon Inn, which was pulled down around uh, 1880 to make site uh, ready for this uh, new library. But uh, the original library and uh, museum was up further up in uh, Guildhall Street.